All right, it's episode three of Chats with Kev. Got the homie Mark Gregory dates on the meeting and holding things down. Bro, how are you and the family? Man, family is good, man. I'm good. You know, we just, uh, we sequestered, man. That's, <laughs> that's the best way to put it, man. Yeah, but no, I'm good. Yeah, okay, I'm your good. current location is where? Brooklyn, New York. Oh, yeah. you in the middle of it? Yeah, but you know what, man? It's, it's interesting because, like, when you turn on the news, you know, the news will make you believe, like, it's like the walking dead outside, Will Smith, I am legend. But man, when I go outside, it's like, it's, I mean, obviously it's not as many people out, but it's still people out moving and grooving, going to work. Like, you wouldn't be able to tell that a pandemic is going on, you know. Um, I mean, when I got on the train a couple of weeks ago, it was still people on the train, you know. Again, not as much, but it's not as bad as they try to make it seem, you know what I mean, just from, like, the optics of it. So where were you when everything basically shut down? Man, I was uh, I was here, you know. Um, I had a show um, March 14th. I was supposed to be in York, Pennsylvania. And, dude, I was literally about to go to Penn Station to take Amtrak to York, PA. And I got an email, like, as I was grabbing my bag, like, your show is canceled. And then I just got more and more emails. And I was like, that was, you know what I mean? It was just like, doo -doo -doo -doo, you know. So, um, yeah, so I was here. Okay. So yeah. how is this whole situation affecting the career? Because, I mean, that's how you make a living, man. You you go on stage, you tell jokes, you entertain people. Obviously, with the lockdown of the country, you're not able to do that. So how is that affecting everything? Man, it ain't done much, man, because, you know, I'm out here robbing. You feel me? So just, <laughs> just running up on people like, hey, I, I need that. All of that. <laughs> no, um, man, I think, you know, that that's like a, a multi-layer question. One... That is why saving is important. You know what I mean? Like saving and having like a nest egg, right? Because you always heard this growing up, like put something aside for a rainy day. Well, yes. uh, it's raining today. You know, <laughs> um, that, um, and there was also been a blessing, man. It's just been my mindset, you know, uh, like when this, ha when this all happened, you know, I told God, I was like, I really don't want to have to dip into my savings. My job is to believe your job is to provide, you know, and like, Shortly after I said that, I started getting hit up. Um, I did a, a show last week for Procter & Gamble for like 40 of their employees on Zoom. Then they was like, hey, do you want to do it again for um, like just some couples? So they was like, hey, we got 10 couples that's going to jump on. And then also I've just been producing shows myself. Last week I did a show um, in a private group on Facebook. So basically I created this group. It's probably about like uh, 100 people in there. You pay ten dollars to join the group, and you see a full comedy show with like hilarious okay. comedians. Um, so you know, in, aside from like shows that I got booked to do, just trying to create my own revenue streams. How do people get in contact with you if they want you to perform on Zoom and everything like that? Man, they could just hit me up uh, via email, comicmarkgreg.com. I mean, no, 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 no. comicmarkgreg at gmail.com. So that's C O M I C. M A R K G R E G at gmail.com. That's it. We'll make it happen. Now, bro, I know you write like every day. You do mm -hmm. tons of reading every day because you stay sharp on your mm -hmm. game, man. I know right now you got a ton of material just stacking right now, man. When can we expect you to unleash this new material, man? I know you've been writing. Man, you know what? I've been writing, but I kind of like been leery about writing a ton of material about the pandemic because it's going to be kind of topical. You know, I feel like uh, I think it'll almost be similar to like OJ jokes, right? Where you get to a show and that's all everybody is going to talk about, you know? So let's say if I'm the third comic on the show or even the fourth, like the first three comics are going to wear out coronavirus. So by the mm -hmm. time I get up, I'm just going to be like, well, I can't do this joke, this joke, this joke. But no, I have been writing some jokes. That one of the jokes I wrote yesterday is about, um, you know, like I'm ready to go outside, but I'm ready to go outside when outside is ready for me. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. It, it ain't ready. Like, it still smell like sneeze outside. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> and if it's, if it's sneeze in the air, I'm cool, right? But, you know, I am kind of feeling like keep sweat. I'm ready to go outside, rain, sleep. The KKK could be out there. But here's the thing, though. This is the tricky part. 
So they open it up the state of Georgia, right? Yeah. But the the businesses that they open it up, it sound a little sketchy because they like we opening up skating rinks, barber shops, beauty salons, strip clubs, soul food restaurants. I'm like, yo, them them all businesses black people go to. <laughs> it's trying to take us out. Yeah, it's trying to take us out, right? When Starbucks open up, that's when I go outside. Like, <laughs> Starbucks and the juice bar is the barometer. You know what I mean? So, um, so, yeah. Yeah, man, I can't help but notice, man, you still look like you got a cut, though. I got a cut two weeks ago. I did get a haircut because it was just like, it, it was getting out of control. I got a cut two weeks ago. Um, but what you looking like under the hat, man? You won't find out. <laughs> <laughs> I got, Yo. the beanie is rocking. <laughs> yeah, I got, I, I got a cut. It's oh, getting it. Yeah, you but we going we yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't looking like Charlemagne out here, thank goodness. But uh no. yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, she she gonna yes. be in clowning. So what's been going on with you, man? How you been uh passing the time, man? And you know, right now, uh we're everybody's working from home. Um yeah. at the radio station. You know, I'm hemmed up uh working at the house, uh doing my show from my laptop. Doing production from my laptop, updating the websites, everything from my laptop, and then that's half of my day. And the other half of that day, I go in the station and I uh I produce one of our radio shows on the sports talk station. He's at the house, I stay in the studio, so it's me and the GM. That's it. Okay. Like ain't been nobody in there. It's like ghost town, man. It's like. You know how, uh, I don't know if you've seen on social media, like, they talking about, like, the animals is, like, roaming the streets. Yeah. That's how Catherine, like, it's a pack of deer that I see every single day. They're like, oh, we back. We jumping. They left finally. Like, yeah. yeah. Out here, man. It's, it's, a, it's a sight to see, man. It's, it's a very strange time, especially here at home, man. I, just, I talk to my mom every day, and the fact that Mother's Day is right around the corner, and she's in Cleveland, and I'm in Dayton, the fact that I'm not going to be able to go see her, the fact that my mom and my grandmother basically hang out every single day, the fact that they can't do that right now is just weird. Do you, uh, so when, when do you think it will clear up, though? Well, um, Governor DeWine, he keeps saying May 1st. May 1st, that's the target date. But, uh, you know, there's going to be steps in place for, you know, visits to reopen, but there's still going to be mandates on how many people can be there so i'm expecting things at the station if they are to open up on the first for us to be in staggered shifts because that's how it first started we started doing staggered shifts like, all right yo we're gonna stagger like five ten people in the building at the time and then it was a complete shutdown so nobody's there so i'm expecting us to go back to that, something like that with a staggered shift situation Gotcha. Yeah, it, man. It, you're it right. Is. It, it is interesting times, man. So when you gonna feel comfortable going back on stage, man? I know you're hitting comedy clubs and churches and everything like that. When are you gonna feel comfortable hitting that stage again? Being hitting the road, getting on an airplane. Man, you know what? I actually was I I was in Ohio, man. So I came back to see my kids. Um I was there uh I want to say like April 24th. No, 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 my fault. March 24th. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I was there like March 24th. So like the first week of April, I was there for two weeks. Okay. And it, was, it, it was scary, man, because like, you know, LaGuardia is like one of the biggest, busiest airports in the country. And nobody was in the airport, man, you know? And it was like, I was one of two people on my flight. It was just, it was, it was interesting, man. And I flew on United. So going from New York to Dayton was cool. But the reason why I stayed longer, because I was trying to get back, but United kept canceling my flights. So mm. like it was every day I would get a, a text message like, hey, your flight to LaGuardia was canceled. Flight to LaGuardia is canceled. So um, I had to fly from Dayton to Newark and then just take New Jersey Transit and two subways home, you know? So it was, it was interesting, man. I, I mean, I started, you know, me, I'm free spirit. I'm pretty laid back. But once I got to the airport, my chest started getting tight because, like, I knew it was real. But, like, once you get to the airport, that's what made it real when you don't see no – now, that is when it felt like a ghost town, you know, so. Yeah, but, man. Uh, Go ahead. But to answer your question, what would I feel comfortable performing again? Uh, 
I'm gonna be honest with you, man. Uh, what type of money we talking? <laughs> Yeah, that, I don't think you're gonna be selling your t-shirts after the shows no time soon. I'm just gonna be like hey. and get them out of Dodge. Yeah, 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 man. So it's, uh, gotta ask you about the battles, man. Okay. The Teddy Riley and Babyface, man. Outside of everything that didn't happen last Saturday and it finally did mm -hmm. happen on Monday, who did you think won? Uh, I, you know what, man? So I saw like the first 40 minutes of Monday's battle. Okay. And then I tapered off. From what I saw, I felt like I, I gave it to Teddy Riley because like Teddy Riley had the club music. And this is just me being, this is subjective, right? Because like I prefer more up tempo music. I don't want to hear like slow jams and go to bed music for like 40 minutes straight. You feel me? Right. So like, I felt like I gave I gave it to Teddy because he had like the jams and the cut stuff that like resonated with me, like Rump Shaker, you know what I mean? He did joints with Michael Jackson and it was like, you know, Babyface, it was just like, you know, it was hits, but the same song because it was real slow. Yeah, yeah. I felt the same way. I felt like TR won, but Saturday was the real show. I mean, you know, you, know, you have to do something epic to overshine Two great musicians, man. So when you jumped on social media to check it out, what was your first thought when everything just was going haywire? I was like, even at the highest level of stardom, black people are still black people. You know what I mean? It's like, so you need to tell me. <laughs> it really felt like your grandmother trying to send you a, 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 a trying to FaceTime. You know how grandma be close to the phone like, <laughs> yes! <laughs> Gavin, can you see me, baby? You like grandma back up from the phone. I mean, I mean, this was the the image right here. When he did this right here, that was pure disappointment. Like, what are you doing? But listen though, but that goes to show you how bored we are. That like the highlight of the weekend is listening to people play music. The same music we got access to via Apple Music. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but when they press play now, it's like magic, you know, so. Uh... Yeah, man, it's funny you mentioned the iPhone thing, man. My grandmother just got an iPhone. And the mm -hmm. first time I FaceTimed her, dude, I looked at her ear for like 30 minutes. Yeah, you know. I didn't have the heart to tell her like grandma. Hey, so, and they do it. <laughs> this how they send this how they text right here. Yeah. But now my yeah. grandma beast at it. All she's sending is emojis. She having a ball <laughs> with the iPhone, man. But hey now, man, one more time, man. How can people get in contact with you if they want you to do a show? If they want to get check out some of your uh stuff that you got going on, on Facebook, how can people get in contact with you? Uh, Facebook, I am under Mark Paul Gregory, and uh, if they want to book me for a show, you can again hit me through Facebook, which is Mark Paul Gregory, or uh, the best way is to just uh, jump in the email, and it is uh, comicmarkgreg at gmail.com, C-O-M-I-C-M-A-R-K, that's Mark with a K, comicmarkgreg at gmail.com. That's what's up, man. We appreciate you coming on, man. You and the family stay safe. Wash them hands. Wear a mask. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Peace, man. Stay safe. All right. You too, bro.